And the World Medical Association has called for boxing to be banned after the death of Mike Towle, who suffered severe brain injuries during a fight in Glasgow. Well, staying with that story, we can now speak to Peter McCabe, the chief executive of Headway, a leading brain injury charity. Peter, thanks so much for joining us this evening. First of all, your reaction to the death of Mike Towle. Well, uh, like everyone, we're incredibly saddened by this death. Uh, but we find ourselves asking the question, why has this happened? And for years, Headway has been saying, along with the British Medical Association, that boxing is an extremely dangerous sport. It's inherently dangerous. And why should we su be surprised if somebody having sustained blows to the head uh, suffers neurological damage, which results in their death. And I think the time has come to ban boxing. Uh, and how many more young people have to lose their lives or end up uh, disabled for life before we do something about it? We're living in the 21st century, uh, and yet this barbaric sport still continues, and it's wrong. But Peter, it's a barbaric sport that a lot of people make the choice uh, to take part in. I spoke to a boxer an hour ago who was very much adamant it is an individual's choice. Boxers, compared to a lot of other sports, know full well the risks they take when they enter the ring. So who are we to stop them taking that risk? I'm not convinced that boxers do understand the risks. I've had the privilege of watching neurosurgeons at work when they're saving uh, the lives of people who've sustained a brain injury. And uh, I was a great supporter of boxing as a young man. I you know, admired Muhammad Ali. And it's only when I found out just how easy it is to sustain uh, a brain injury that can either kill you or cause you lifelong disability that I recognized that this was a price too high to pay. The medical regulations in boxing are exceptional. If you suffer a head injury or a concussion, it's the longest time out of being going back to the sport compared to any other sport and it's also not even the sport where you're most likely at risk of brain injury and concussion horse racing for example you are at much higher risk so should we also ban horse racing not at all i mean the difference between uh, boxing and horse racing is the objective of horse racing is to finish first get your horse across the line first the objective in boxing is to render your opponent senseless by repeated blows to the head. Uh, and, you know, I know just how easy uh, it is for people to sustain a brain injury. When uh, a punch is thrown and lands, the brain uh, moves inside the skull. So if the collision is on this side, the brain collides over the other side. Uh, and inside in the brain, you've got the, the blood vessels and tissues being pulled and stretched and torn. And that's what leads to bleeds in the brain. And it's not very long ago that Nick Blackwell was put in a coma. And so you tell me that boxing is safe and that there are all sorts of stringent medical controls. Well, how does this keep happening over and over again? Boxing is a sport that obviously a lot of people take part in and a lot of people like watching because it has that inherent risk and it's two men or two women going at each other physically. Now, would there be a risk of driving this sport underground? Because people will always want to take part in the sport. If you ban it and get rid of the medical regulations that are very good, they are very good, is there not a risk that you just drive it underground and you put people at more risk? But you keep saying that these medical uh, controls are very good. And yet I'm uh, reading today uh, that um, this boxer uh, was complaining of headaches uh, in the run-up to the fight. Well, if the medical uh, regulations are so good, then how is it that somebody who's complaining of, of headaches well, he... is able to get in the ring and risk their lives? His trainer said they didn't know anything about that and, in, uh, and he may well have decided not to tell doctors um, that he was having headaches. He didn't necessarily relate it to his brain injury. So it may not be that it's a so doctor's doesn't fault. That leave some serious questions so doesn't that leave some serious questions about the procedure screening prior to a boxing match? But, you know, at the end of the day, boxing is inherently dangerous. And it's not just Headway, the Brain Injury Association, that think it should be banned. There are 11 medical associations around the world who take the same view because there isn't a safe way to box. 
Um, it, it simply is inherently dangerous and there are lots of things that society protects people from doing that they may want to do, but we have a responsibility to protect them. What would you say to um, parents and, in fact, young people who are enthusiastic about keeping fit, getting involved in boxing, and that's the sport they want to do? Would you absolutely point blank say, do not let your child and do not let yourself get into a boxing ring? Is that your advice? I would say, and, and I think one of the questions, an interesting question to pose would be, uh, how often do you see the sons of neurosurgeons boxing? They don't because their fathers know too much about it. But I have two sons and I have uh, two grandsons and I would urge them to take up any sport. There are hundreds of sports where people can you know, develop their uh, expertise, they can let off steam, they can become superb athletes. But this is the only sport where the object is to cause your opponent neurological damage by knocking them unconscious. Peter, really appreciate your time this evening and thank you for telling us your views and also the views of Headway. Uh, thanks very much for joining us here on Sky News. Thank you.